Hello guys, this is Adib. Welcome to my channel Movement Science where I simplify biomechanics with Joe. In today's video, Kavita ma'am is going to cover the biomechanics of TMJ that is the temporomandibular joint. In this video, we will be covering the articulation of the joint and along with that we will be also talking about the disc and what are the structures that are attached to the disc and what movements they prevent. So without any further ado, let's get started. everyone so today we will be discussing about the temporomandibular joint that is the TMJ joint as you all know that it's one of the most used joints um, of our body and basically we use temporomandibular joint for phonation for mastication for swallowing and even for facial expressions so today we will be br briefly covering the anatomy of the temporomandibular joint and then we look at the movements that are possible around this joint so now let's just start with um, the TMG joint. So the TMG joint basically has, uh, since it's a joint, it has two articulating surfaces. The first articulating surface is the stable articulating surface, which that means that a particular surface is essentially stationary, and that is the temporal bone, which is the stable part of the joint. And the second articulating surface is the mobile part of the TMG joint and which is the mandible. So basically in the temporomandibular joint we have the temporal bone which is going to be essentially stationary and then we have the mandible which is moving. So now let us look precisely at what are the articulating surfaces on the temporal side and what are the articulating surfaces on the uh, mandibular side. So, if you look at the articulating surfaces on the temporal side, the main articulating surface is the structure that we see here that is the articular eminence. All right. Now, if you look at uh, the um, joint, you can see that the articular eminence is slightly on the anterior portion and then behind the articular eminence, you have a small fossa which is called as a glenoid fossa. Now, if you observe the mandible, you can say that uh, you can see that the um, mandible also contacts the glenoid fossa, but majority of the time the mandible is in contact with the articular eminence. So, to repeat it again, the articulating surface or the proximal articulating surfaces surface on the stationary bone that is a temporal bone is the articular eminence of the temporal bone and a small portion just behind the articular eminence which is called as the glenoid fossa. Uh, now we come to the, um, the next articulating surface which is the mobile articulating surface and ma where majority of the movements are happening. And uh, the mobile articulating surface is called as a ramus of the uh, mandible. As you can see that this uh, extended portion superiorly is from the base of the mandible, right? So, the extended portion is called as the ramus. The ramus has two parts, an anterior part which is called as the coronoid process, okay? And then the posterior part which is called as the uh, condyle of the mandible. So, the coronoid process uh, is not the articulating surface, but if you look at the coronoid process in this diagram, you can see that it, it sits under the zygomatic arch of the skull. Okay. So, the, cor uh, the coronoid process basically sits under the, um, the uh, zygomatic arch of the sk skull, especially when the mouth is closed. Okay. Now, we come to the articulating surface of the temporomandibular joint on the mandible is called as the condyle. Uh, the condyle is an extended area and is uh, and is extended into the medial and the lateral poles and the, it is this condyle which articulates basically with the uh, articular eminence if you look at uh, the tmg joint tmg joint is generally considered as a synovial joint but it does not contain a hyaline cartilage it has basically fibrocartilage. Now, fibrocartilage is usually uh, present in joints which require a lot of stability rather than mobility Though uh, temporomandibular joint is a mobile joint, okay, it keeps working throughout the day, hence the stresses on the temporomandibular joint are high, which is why we have a uh, fibrocartilage, uh, you know, it has a fibrocartilage instead of a hyaline cartilage, which is an essential feature of synovial joint. So, it is an exception here, though it is considered as a synovial joint, it does not have a hyaline cartilage, it basically has fibrocartilage lining the joint surfaces. 
Now that we have discussed the articular surfaces of the temporomandibular joint that is the bony surface, let us move on to some additional structures which are there inside the temporomandibular joint. The first structure that I would like to discuss is the disc which is called as the articular disc. Uh, the articular disc is actually a biconcave structure. So, biconcave structure in the sense it is concave in the superior portion as well as the inferior portion okay. and the disc is functions as an additional st uh, stabilizing factor for the temporomandibular joint. Now, let us look at what is special about this disc. The disc actually converts the temporomandibular joint into two different um, joint surfaces. So, that is what it is it is said that the disc divides the joint into two surfaces. There is an upper joint and a lower joint. So, what is this upper joint? The upper joint is between the disc okay, and uh, the temporal bone that is the articular eminence of the temporal bone form and the disc forms the upper joint. So, let us say that it is on the superior portion of the disc okay, and the inferior joint surface is basically between the disc and the condyle of the mandible. So, we have so the disc basically divides the joint into a superior surface and an inferior surface and the superior surface is between the disc and the temporal bone and the inferior joint cavity is between the mandibular condyle and the disc. So, we call it as the upper joint and the lower joint. Now, why do we? So, what is essentially different between the upper joint and the lower joint? Uh, so, through by you know generally it is conceptually believed that uh, the lower joint basically has a lot of rotation movements and pivoting movements and it is considered as a hinge joint. So, the mandibular condyle has a lot of rotatory movements and it is a hinge joint in the, the lower joint is a hinge joint. Uh, while the upper joint basically be, uh, behaves like a plain synovial joint has and has more of uh, translatory movements. Okay, so, so, you can say that the disc is basically a fibrocartilage, it is biconcave in nature and it divides the uh, joint surface into an upper and a lower cavity, the upper cavity between the temporal bone and the disc and the lower cavity between the mandibular condyle and the disc. Each of these joints behave differently, the lower portion is behaves like a hinge joint and then majority of rotations happen here and then you have the upper joint which basically behaves as a plain synovial joint and a lot of translatory movements happen in the upper joint. Uh, the disc is a relatively a vascular structure on the peripheral portion it has a very minimal vascular supply and the central in the central portion uh, it does not have much of blood supply it is not well vascularized there. Uh, this can be a source of pain in majority of the individuals um, you know if the patient develops a TMJ pain some of the, most of the times the disc can be dysfunctional. So, now let us go on to since the disc of the temporomandibular joint is such an important structure let us look at some um, structures uh, uh, that are attached to the disc. Now, basically the disc has to move within the joint cavity. So, hence its movements are extremely controlled. Uh, so, we are going to look at two structures uh, that are attached to the disc. One is uh, one the first uh, part is to discuss the structures which are attached to the anterior portion of the disc. So, if you look at the disc anteriorly it is attached to the capsule um, we do not have the capsule here, but generally every joint has a capsule right. So, the disc anteriorly is attached to the capsule and it is also attached to the superior portion and the inferior portion of the lateral pterygoid muscle. So, what these structures do is since these structures are attached anteriorly they check excessive posterior migration of the disc. Um, another structure um, that is um, that is attached to the disc is called as the retrodiscal lamina. Uh, it is present behind the disc. Uh, the retrodiscal uh, lamina is a complex you can call it as a complex connective tissue which is attached uh, posteriorly to the disc and it attaches to the temporal bone. The retrodiscal lamina has a superior as well as the inferior portion. And then um, to summarize it and not to make it very complex, uh, the retrodiscal lamina basically checks the excessive anterior movement of the disc as well as the condyles of the mandible. So, what happens is that when we do mouth opening and when the uh, mandibular condyle translates anteriorly and the disc is also moving, the retrodiscal uh, lamina will prevent excessive anterior movement of the disc and then pull it back uh, when uh, you know when if there is excessive movement the same way when there is mouth closing you want the disc to translate posteriorly and then the lamina makes I mean the lam the retrodiscal lamina will ensure that there is a smooth posterior movement of the disc during mouth closing. 